We're all excited for Teen Titans Go! to the movies. We've seen the trailers, and we have found some pretty mind-blowing dark facts about the upcoming movie. Watch until the end to find a pretty mind-blowing connection to Slade Wilson. Be sure to hit that notification bell to be the first to see our latest videos. And click that thumbs up button if you like our video here on the Things channel. Now, check out these dark truths behind Teen Titans Go! to the movies. The Green Lantern Burn Ryan Reynolds described the superhero box office flop, The Green Lantern, as a victim of Hollywood. In fact, it's no secret that The Green Lantern movie was a major failure, according to fans. We all know that Teen Titans Go! features immature characters who have no problem making fun of each other. So it only makes sense that Teen Titans Go! to the movies would revel in poking fun at other superhero movies. In fact, that seems to be the whole premise of the new movie. Robin wants to have a movie made about him. He decides he will do whatever it takes to be in the ranks of the countless other superhero film characters. So of course, they're going to make fun of the other superhero movies. If you watch the trailer of the movie, there's a part where they meet the Green Lantern. Starfire asks him if there was a movie made about him. The Green Lantern responds, saying that there was a Green Lantern movie, but they don't talk about it. Ouch! Even Deadpool poked fun at the Green Lantern movie. Considering the ratings and low box office numbers, it's an easy target. It only rated at 26% on Rotten Tomatoes. In a scathing review, one critic asked just how many more of these superheroes can we take? We know that Robin and the rest of the Teen Titans are hoping audiences can stomach at least one more. It seems these characters are more of the anti-hero, like Deadpool. But we'll get to that a little later in the video. The Wonder Woman reference In the first official trailer for Teen Titans Go! to the movies, Robin addresses the audience. He talks about what makes a real hero. He says it's not about the costumes, the gadgets, or the cool powers. Robin says it's about having your own movie. He says that has always been his dream. Then we see Starfire, Beast Boy, Cyborg, and Raven dressed as Wonder Woman. Robin looks at the rest of the gang and asks what they're doing. Cyborg replies that they're just giving the people what they want. This is a total facepalm moment for Robin, who was trying to get everyone to take his quest for movie stardom seriously. He says that the movie's not about Wonder Woman, that it's about the Teen Titans. The Teen Titans agree that Wonder Woman inspires people, and well, they don't. Therein lies the dark truth. The Teen Titans don't think they're good enough, so they're trying to be like Wonder Woman. We all know how much Cyborg loves Wonder Woman. This causes some major frustration for Robin. But really, can you blame the Teen Titans? Wonder Woman was a major box office success, so it only makes sense that the Teen Titans would want to be like Wonder Woman. And they look pretty good in those Wonder Woman costumes, right? Teen Titans Go! started as an experiment. After the original Teen Titans series came to an end in 2006, Cartoon Network wasn't quite finished with the characters, but they weren't quite sure what to do with it next. So they started experimenting with the characters in a series of short animated sequences. They made a little mini-series called New Teen Titans. It featured a silly, slapstick version of the teen superheroes that didn't take themselves too seriously. Since Young Justice toys weren't selling well, Cartoon Network wanted to aim for a much younger viewing audience. The network decided to go for it and invested in the show that we all now know as Teen Titans Go! Who knew it would one day become a movie? And it all started out as an experiment. While the show was a big departure from the original 2003 version, one thing remained the same. The voice talent for the characters moved to the new show. They brought back the original voice actors from the first Teen Titans and they continue to voice the characters for Teen Titans Go! Scott Menville still plays the voice of Robin, Greg Sipes is still Beast Boy, Hinden Walsh is Starfire, Carrie Payton is Cyborg, and Tara Strong is Raven. Okay, we admit that's more of a cool fact than a dark truth. It just goes to show that some experiments are worth the risk. Teen Titans Go! continues to be a fan favorite. Jason Todd's ashes are on Robin's bookshelf. Since we're talking about the dark truth behind the Teen Titans Go! movie, let's unpack a bit from the Cartoon Network TV show. It's supposed to be silly and geared toward a younger audience, so it's pretty surprising when they inject a bit of dark humor in the show. If they're adding these dark references in the TV show, chances are pretty good that they'll do the same for the movie. It's no secret that Teen Titans Go! likes to put Easter eggs referring to the DC Universe in the episodes of the show. Just look at the backgrounds and you'll find countless references to the Justice League. But there's one Easter egg that has fans shocked because it's so dark. Apparently, a Reddit viewer pointed out that there's an episode where Robin is reaching up to a bookshelf with various Batman trophies on it. One viewer found a pretty disturbing trophy on the shelf. 
Right there in plain sight is an urn with the label that reads Robin 2 next to a crowbar. Apparently that's from a 1988 comic story. In the story, the second character to act as Robin was brutally beaten by the Joker with a crowbar and left to be blown up by a bomb. It was the bomb that ended poor Robin number two, but the crowbar has become a dark symbol in the Joker stories ever since. And it sits next to Robin number two's ashes on the shelf in TTG. Alfred really is getting a lot of attention. In the latest official trailer for Teen Titans Go! to the movies, the gang is at a movie theater watching a preview for an upcoming film. Robin is so excited, he thinks they're finally gonna make a movie about him. The preview goes on to say that it's a story about Batman's greatest ally and best friend in the whole world. Robin is sure they're talking about him, and the Teen Titans are cheering. But then they zoom out from the R on the screen to reveal the name Alfred. You know, Batman's butler? So what's with the hype about Alfred? The truth is, he is getting quite a bit of attention. Apparently, they're making a new TV show on the cable network Epix about Batman's butler, Alfred. That's right, folks. Alfred is getting his own epic origin story. It's called Pennyworth. But even before that, there was a mock trailer on Funny or Die about Alfred's origin story. It pairs Michael Caine from the Dark Knight trilogy with scenes from Oliver Twist so Robin's not wrong to be miffed at all the attention Alfred is getting while he seems to be getting ignored. But we're guessing there'll be a lot less potty humor in the Alfred series than there is in the TTG movie. The Pursuit of Fame There are so many kids shows and movies about the relentless pursuit of stardom. According to a study done at UCLA, fame is the number one value communicated to preteens on TV and in movies. Popular entertainment for kids is pushing down values like being an upstanding member of a community. While while elevating the need for fame. Anyone who's wanted more followers on social media can relate to this relentless pursuit for viewers and followers. Now there's nothing wrong with success and the attention that comes with it, but we seem to be missing the important fact that any worthwhile success comes from hard work, perseverance, and developing one's talents. It seems like Teen Titans go to the movies are chasing fame, which might not be the best message for kids, unless the Titans realize that in order to be considered heroes, they have to perform heroic selfless actions. You know, instead of shoving their faces full of burgers and ice cream. In the movie trailer, Superman chides the Teen Titans because they don't fight crime or actually save anyone. So maybe the movie is about developing yourself instead of seeking stardom. Maybe they will learn to grow up. But after seeing that giant balloon man with wind coming out of his, um, maybe not. Teen Titans are evil? Are the Teen Titans really the good guys? I mean, Superman doesn't even think they're worthy of being called heroes. Most bad guys don't think they're the bad guys. So is it possible that the Teen Titans are really evil? Now that's a dark theory worth exploring, and it's exactly what one Reddit viewer did. In his post, he points out several examples to support his theory that the Teen Titans are actually evil. The Redditor illustrates that the Titans save a middle-aged beast boy from the man. He pointed out that superheroes don't usually end their foe's life. Then there was another example in the episode Opposites. In that episode, the Titans were caught robbing a bank. Hmm. That's pretty villain-like. The Reddit user also mentions the time in in and out where the Titans invade the Hive to blow it up. Then there was the time in the episode Staring at the Future, where Cyborg and Beast Boy were in the longest staring contest ever. It lasted 30 years. During their stare-off, everyone else grew up to become responsible adults. Since Cyborg and Beast Boy didn't want to be responsible, they built a time machine to go back to the past. They wind up creating the apocalypse of Jump City. And then there was the time they blew up parts of the city for free pizza. We can see this Redditor's point. They do kind of seem like villains. Alternate universe. Reddit user Killjoy95 has a pretty impressive theory about the Titans. Killjoy95 realized that the Titans from the newer TV show are unaware of the past events involving the characters from the original show. Killjoy cites an example that none of the Titans remember Terra when she returns in TTG. They don't even explain how she returned out of her statue form state that she was in during the end of the original show. Killjoy thinks that since the new show is so wacky and bizarre, it's most likely because they exist in an alternate dimension. Because the Titans act so childish and unprofessional, Killjoy thinks it is likely that they're alternate versions of their original counterparts. Another user commented that Teen Titans Go! is a Titan parody show created by the High Five to make the Titans look foolish. So watching the TTG movie will be like watching a movie about characters from a TV show who want to have their own movie. But that TV show is really a parody of another TV show 
to make the original characters look foolish. Yeah, we're a little lost too. Either that, or Teen Titans Go! is a TV show about an alternate universe to another TV show where the characters are silly and wacky and make fun of other characters in other movies and TV shows. Jade Wilson Fan Theory Now let's get back to the actual movie. That's why we're here in the first place, right? So there's a theory about the Titans' heavily sought-after nemesis, Slade, that's pretty interesting. The Roundtable analyzed the trailer of Teen Titans Go! to the movies and had a couple of cool ideas about the direction the film might take. They said the entire film is grounded in meta-humor, which we already discussed. But here's something you may have missed. Slade actually has a speaking role in the Teen Titans movie, and the Titans say they thought he was Deadpool, which is an ongoing joke for the Titans. But there's a completely new character in the film who goes by the name Jade Wilson. Hmm, that sounds a lot like Slade Wilson. In the Teen Titans Go! movie, Jade is a film director who rejects the Titans by saying she only makes films about real superheroes. But if you notice her white hair and pale skin, you'd probably already make the connection to Rose Wilson, aka a Ravager and daughter of Slade. Ravager has already made an appearance in Tea Titans Go, so it's possible that the movie director Jade is Rose's mother, which would mean that she's intimately connected with Slade. That would make her rejection of the Titans all part of a sinister plot to keep them invisible to the rest of the world. Not to mention, the Titans are trying to get Slade to be their arch nemesis. So, who is Jade? We'll just have to wait and see. And that's our examination of some dark theories and truths behind Teen Titans Go! to the movies. Thanks for watching The Things. See you next time!